So you're undefeated, you win the championship. What still sticks out to you from that 1984 season? Well, it was so unbelievable because uh, it, it, no way it was ever going to happen with the team from this <laughs> part of the country because of our lack of national exposure and uh, the, just the attitude that, you know, they don't play football right. as well here as they do in other parts of the country. And historically, that was the case. Um, so to have us come out of nowhere virtually and to win it uh, was uh, took a lot of a lot of things had to fall into place. The stars had to be aligned, <laughs> right, and whatever else. But um, then when we finally did, you know, got that opportunity, then we made the most of it and beat a good Michigan team in the Holiday Bowl. Uh, I don't think it could happen in today's environment because of the BCS the way right. it's structured. I think uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility now to get a BCS game like Utah had a couple of years ago, but uh, uh, it's going to be unlikely that we'll ever play for national championship, championship again, again under the present setup. Okay. In that last game versus Michigan, Robbie Bosco goes out with torn ligaments in his knee. What's going through your mind on the sideline? Well, I think, you know, I was just thinking, man, we've come this far and everything's gone so well. We, we just, hopefully it's going to be all right. And they told me that uh, he should be able to come back. And so he goes into the locker room and, uh, and they take care of him, get him taped back up again. And, indicated that uh, he's not going to do a lot of serious damage to it uh, by letting him play. And so we did that and got into the shotgun where he had a direct snap most of the time when he was throwing. And uh, that uh, helped him so he didn't have to move around so much. And uh, you know, ironically, I think we threw four or five interceptions in that game <laughs> and still came back and won there at the end, put two 40-yard or two 80-yard drives in the fourth quarter together and uh, then of course he threw that last great pass to Kelly Smith and uh, that helped us win the ball game. Right. At the end of that amazing season you were offered a head coaching position with the Detroit Lions. Right. In reality how close were you to taking that job? Well I really thought uh, going into the uh, that particular season, not that season particularly, but prior to that I had been offered a number of head of uh, jobs in college. And I'd made up my mind that there was no way I was going to take another college job. But if, uh, in my own mind, I made up my, if I ever got an NFL offer, that I definitely would take it. And I thought that was probably the safe way out, probably, <laughs> as it turned out, because I wasn't going to happen. And uh, then, of course, when it did happen, then it was very difficult uh, to try to decide what to do. And uh, I was in uh, Nashville at the National Coaches Convention. We had to leave there and go to. Uh, Washington D.C. and meet the president. Uh, they, had, they had arranged for that, uh, and then we uh, met for President Reagan, and then my wife and I were uh, there together. And Detroit Lions had called and wanted me to come to Detroit, and the job was going to be offered to me. And on the way home, but we had a big recruiting weekend, and we just couldn't get it worked out. And I told the guy I was going to be in D.C. for a while, and so he flew in to general manager flew into Washington, D.C. and met with Patty and I in a hotel room prior to meeting President Reagan. And uh, we talked about it. And then the driver there, he offered me the job and he said, the job's yours. And <laughs> so I said, well, let me go home and get things organized. Well, I went home and, and uh, they gave me the weekend. And the longer I put it off and, and I couldn't make up my mind, the thought occurred to me that uh, there's no way this is going to work out. If you can't just drop what you're doing and be excited about going, it's right. not going to be the right move to make. And so we called him and uh, told him that uh, we thanked him and whatever that would pass on it. And that was really the last time that I had any offer from the NFL. Any regrets? No, none whatsoever. No regrets. It's great. <laughs> the guy they hired was fired three years later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no regrets. He was a good coach. <laughs> well, skipping ahead to 1991, your team beats Miami at home. In your opinion, was that the biggest home game in the history of BYU football? It'd have to be, no question about it. They were ranked number one coming into the season, and uh, we had, uh, I, I think, uh, I don't know if we were preseason ranked or not, but uh, open, and open up there in Cougar Stadium, it was really a, really a great uh, evening, and and what had happened is uh, the game was announced of starting at like at 7, and it actually didn't start till 7.30. And so historically, we, we start games, and half the crowd is empty because yeah. the students are still coming, coming down across, off the hill yeah. to come in. But so by the time we kicked off, uh, 
it was the stadium was full <laughs> and uh, and there was the, the kind of electricity in the air right from the start and we got off to a good start and hung in there and made a big play at the end to hold on to win and that was very exciting. How did that game influence Ty Detmer's Heisman run? Well, uh, for all intents and purposes, it made that Heisman for him, no yeah. question. Uh, we had had uh, Steve and Jim and Gifford and uh, Mark Wilson and some of those others that, uh, you know, had had some uh, mention that got as high as either second or third in the voting. And, and the quarterbacks, they'd all made All-American, and, and so they had great credential. And I think with Detmer, uh, uh, having that um, great game against, it was on national television, mm -hmm. uh, really put him in the driver's seat and then he went on to have a great year and very deservedly uh, won it. How special was it for you to have one of your quarterbacks win that award? Well, that was very special, it, no question about it, because another, again, it was one of those things that you read about others getting in other parts of the country and I don't know that we've ever had anybody from this part of the country that, you know, the, in the Intermountain West that's ever won one. And so that was very special. Well, Ty Detmer was only one to win, the only one to win the Heisman, but many of Lavelle's quarterbacks received other awards. Brandon Despain gives us a look at the quarterback factory. You know the greats, Young, McMahon, Nielsen, Wilson and Bosco. Under the direction of Lovell Edwards, BYU became known as the Quarterback Factor. They include a Heisman Trophy winner and four Davey O'Brien Award winners, given to the best quarterback in the nation. Edwards' passers led the nation in total offense seven times. With the pass first, run second attack, BYU quarterbacks rewrote the NCAA record books and put BYU on the map for college football.